Welcome to Story Station, Season 2, Episode 10. In this episode, you can listen to two Vietnamese stories. The first story is titled, The Magic Crossbow. This is a sad tale about deception, betrayal, and remorse. The second story is titled, The Golden Axe. This story teaches you that honesty will always trump greed in any situation. Hope you enjoy it! I'll read a story called The Magic Crossbow. After defeating the last king of the Hun era, putting an end to a dynasty that reigned the kingdom for so long, Tuk Phan An Duang Wang unified the two countries of Ao Viet and Lok Viet, establishing it into a new kingdom and named it Ao Lok. He then proclaimed himself King An Duang Wang, and Ao Lok became the country's new center of power. With the strategic and geographic importance of Koloa, he declared it as the kingdom's capital and ordered for a fortress to be built around the city for its walls to keep the capital safe from invaders. However, the construction of the spiral shaped citadel became difficult to complete, and every time they succeeded in putting up a wall, it crumbled. According to a prophecy, a coalition of evil spirits of the Hong Wong de descendants, seeking revenge for the loss of their kingdom, prevents the walls from ever being put up. Seeking for the completion of the fortress to help protect his reign, King An Duang Wang burnt incense, prayed, made offerings, and evoked all the gods to grant him his desire. In answer to his prayers, the gods sent a magical golden turtle to aid the king in accomplishing his wishes. After the walls of the spiral fortress, Koloa Tan solidly stood. The turtle was summoned back by the gods. As a token to the king, he gave one of his claws and instructed An Duang Wang to use it as a trigger of his royal crossbow. Such, he said, will keep his kingdom invincible. And indeed, with the help of this magic weapon, King An Duang Wang succeeded in protecting his kingdom for a long time. Many times, the ambitious Chinese warlord Tru Da attempted to invade Ao Lok, but he never succeeded. To devise his scheme, he negotiated a peace treaty with Ao Lok, and shortly after, he sent his son, Truong Choi, to the king's court to ask for the hand of Princess Mai Chao for marriage. The king approved, and Truong Choi came to live in the kingdom. Through Mai Chao, Truong Choi learned the secrets of the king and how the magic crossbow kept their kingdom protected. Secretly, he replaced the golden turtle's claw with an ordinary claw and seeked permission from his wife to see his father. Before he left, he made a promise to my child that in case a conflict arise, he will come back to look for her. My child, in return, promised her husband that she would drop goose feathers from her blanket along her track so Throng Toy will be able to find her. Wang Toy bid his farewells and took the magic claw with him back to his father. Having possessed the turtle's magical claw, Truda then raised a sudden attack against Ao Lok. But King An Duong Vong was confident that his crossbow would once again save his kingdom. He calmly faced Truda's army as they arrived at the gate of his fortress. He took out his magic crossbow and fired at the invaders, but nothing happened. The king then realized that the golden claw that was used to kill thousands with a single shot 
had been replaced. Unprepared, the king and his army fled in panic. With Princess Maichao behind his horse, the king fled to the south. But when he reached the seashore, there was no ship in sight. In desperation, the king again called on the gods to for help. The golden turtle, sent by the gods, emerged from the waters and appeared before An Duong Duong. The turtle told the king of his daughter's betrayal and instructed him to destroy her before he would be saved. So the king pulled out his sword and beheaded my child. With that, the golden turtle took the king below the waters and disappeared. Guided by the goose feathers, Tuang Toy followed the trail and arrived at the seashore shortly, only to find the body of his beloved and King An Duong Vuong nowhere to be found. My child's blood flowed down the ocean floor, where the oysters swallowed it and amazingly transformed them into pearls. In deep remorse and grief over the death of my child, he drowned himself as well in order to be with her in eternity. The end. I hope you enjoyed this story. The next story begins in a moment. I'll read a story called The Golden Axe. There was once a very poor man who lived near the forest. He was able to earn enough money for a bare existence by cutting firewood, which his wife would barter for rice in the marketplace. One day, when the man was cutting wood at the river's edge, the axe slipped from his hands and fell into the water. Although the woodcutter searched for it everywhere, it was not to be found. Discouraged, he sat down on the bank and lowered his head sadly, and wondered how he would ever be able to earn a living in the future. When the man raised his eyes again, he saw a little old man standing in front of him. The newcomer asked the woodcutter the reason for his unhappiness. The latter described what had happened and added that the lost axe had been his most valuable possession. Only with it would he be able to earn his daily rice. I am the dragon of this river, said the old man sympathetically, and I'm going to help you. If you will wait here for a minute, I'll recover your asks for you. With th these words, the old man plunged into the water. A few moments later, he reappeared, holding a golden axe in his hand. Is this your axe? he asked. No, replied the woodcutter. That's not mine. My axe was made of iron, and it had a wooden handle. The river dragon plunged into the water again, and emerged, holding aloft a silver axe. Is this axe yours? he asked. Again, the honest woodcutter replied in the negative. The dragon then submerged for a third time. When he reappeared, he was holding a very ordinary iron axe in his hand. Is this your axe? he asked the woodcutter. Yes, came the reply. That is mine, and I thank you from the very bottom of my heart for your assistance. You are a very honest man, said the river dragon. For that reason, in addition to this axe, I am going to give you one of silver and one of gold as well. It was difficult for the simple woodcutter to find words with which to thank his benefactor. He picked up the three axes and returned to his cottage. With the evidence of all this new wealth aroused the speculation of the woodcutter's neighbors. With the exception of one man, however, 
they all wished him well. This man was full of envy and was greatly desirous of obtaining for himself a golden or a silver axe. From the woodcutter, he obtained an exact description of the place on the riverbank where the miraculous event had taken place. The greedy man then found an old rusty axe and went there with it. He threw the iron axe into the water and pretended to be greatly troubled because of its loss. The little old man appeared before him and asked the cause of his trouble. Falsely, the man described his loss and begged for the old man's assistance. You shall receive justice, was the reply. Thereupon, the old man plunged into the river and reappeared with a golden axe in his hand. Before the dragon even had time to ask the question, the man shouted, That's my axe. Give it to me at once. You are lying, replied the dragon angrily. Raising the axe high in the air, he struck the liar a blow on the neck, killing him instantly. Since that time, no one has ever tried to obtain a golden axe, or even a silver one, from the river dragon's hoard. The end. I hope you enjoyed this story. Thank you for listening to Story Station. We are adding stories as frequently as possible, so check back often. We would love to hear your feedback and any questions you may have. Thank you.